Hey crew, it's Ben. And I'm back with another reaction video. This one's not music. This one's a little bit different. We're going to be talking once again about The Looking Glass. We're going to be talking once again about Inspired. I love Inspired's channel. I don't necessarily hold The Looking Glass, but they're just relaying the information. And they do a fairly good job of that. Uh, but this was older. This was before the first events. This was before all of that. And this is the, the tale of a military insider and how they panicked when they saw the future. And there are several points that I would like to hit in this. Uh, I, I didn't watch all of it, but I started it and I was like, yeah, there's some things I need to talk about in here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig in and we're going to talk about them. Well, let's go. I love the way that Jean and them put together these. It's really well done every time. Uh, I, I love the vistas. I don't know where they get their source. None of that stuff. But it, I really do like their, their aesthetic for these videos. One of the caveats that I do have some personal information uh, that I did get personally involved in was some information that had to do with the Stargates and Looking Glass. Stargates and Looking Glass. That is very interesting because there's legends of a gate in the area of Babylon. And more specifically, the 2012 problem with those projects. The popular opinion of what's out there right now is that the project was shut down because there was a problem when we approached 2012. I've heard it described a number of ways, but to my knowledge, the problem is, is that the timelines converge on that point. Okay, so this was prior to the 2012 date that this audio was done, obviously. He's talking about a future event in 2012. A lot of people will tell you that nothing happened in 2012 and that it was all this just big, just this big conspiracy theory and that there was no problems and nothing happened I do not hold in line with that we had the Fukushima Chan uh, earthquake that tilted the earth uh, significantly enough that every airport on the planet had to be adjusted for it uh, and that since then we have not had anything be the same for a very long stretch we got no hurricanes out of the Atlantic that made landfall inside the Gulf, outside of the Florida Peninsula. And that is significant. It was almost a decade before we finally got something. When we finally did, they both came along a very pointed line that could point to some technologies, and I'm not saying that it does, but I'm saying that it is awfully strange that there was a straight line trajectory for these two and the one came in and kind of faltered out and the second one came in and was actually able to hit. I think that they attempted that prior to that and they were fizzling out and so they had to do that double up action right there. Uh, we the, the hurricanes that developed in the Gulf had no problems. They were intense and powerful. Even the tropical storms were flood level events all the time but the, all of those events started in the gulf they didn't come from the coast of africa like they normally do normally the the, the heat comes off of africa builds up the low pressure system builds up inside the heat wave coming off of africa and it slides over and it comes up in this big massive storm that was not happening until just very recently ever since 2012 uh, We've had significant changes into the heat and the, the way that the sun looks and all of those things. Uh, there were multiple stories of the sun moving enough that, like, there's an Inuit who tells the story of his whole life and his father's whole life and his grandfather's whole life. On this day, the sun comes up right next to this peak right here. And now it comes up next to this peak over here. And that they could see that more because they're at the top of the globe and it shifted more but it shifted for everyone and it changed our weather patterns they have not been the same since 2012 uh, 
So I do believe that something happened, that it was the beginning of a new age, like the, the Mayans actually said. They never said it was going to be the end of all time. They said it was going to be the beginning of a new age, the end of the old one, the start of the new cycle. Um, there are several different religious beliefs held by indigenous peoples all across the globe that hold that the same events are going to happen uh, and they're going to fall into line. That comes in very important later. All of these different beliefs that there will be a same thing. Uh, and now we're going to get into this. In time. So this is prior to 2012. And when you know enough about the Stargate projects and the Looking Glass project to know how string theory works and how the possibility of possibilities works. And the possibility of possibilities. That is intention brings forth possibility. And whatever you set your mind to, if you focus like you're shooting at a target with your mind, that sets intentionality. I'm going to have a whole chapter in the book dealing with intentionality and uh, the, the way that you look at things. Uh, the perspective and intentionality really shape your life. Uh, and the possibility of possibilities that he's talking about right here is the possibility of bringing forth possibilities, of making the possibilities into reality. And that is intentionality at work. I think that was the bigger goal of the Looking at Glass project. I think that whoever the actors may have been, I think that they knew they were full of it, right? They were amalgamating something, and they were trying to do it in a way that would pop off the people who believed in the letter for four years, right? Uh, and some of them still do believe in the letter. And it would set off people in that manner so that they would focus their intentionality onto pulling into existence this reality. I think that a collective effort can most definitely do that. Jesus told you that when he said, wherever three of you, three or two of them were gathered, uh, if you put your, your minds together and you pray together, then you can make something happen. But that is what this is. That is the possibility of possibilities. You have to see the possibility in your mind and attract it to you at the same time. That is intentionality. This is the thing. It has already happened, and I am on my way to it. How making one choice over here doesn't necessarily mean that the other choice couldn't exist at the same time. That is a very important thing to talk about. Because as good as your intentions are, and your intentions, I'm going to assume... If you're on my channel, your intentions are for the best. And you're intending to exude love. And you're intending to exude abundance. But despite the fact that you are doing that, there is a group who has the opposite an intention. Their intention is to bring about the one world government. And it is their intention to focus all of their possibilities in that direction. We, on the other side, do not tend to group collectively with power. There are churches out there that do not believe in the power of prayer. And prayer is setting intentionality. That is why, like, I don't believe that there is a divine being sitting out there that is like, okay, I'm going to answer that prayer, right? What I think is happening is this you are calling into by praying to God you are asking for knocking on the door and having it opened your intentionality I think that is what's happening but we don't do that collectively we're scared of what somebody might say we're scared of what it might look like if we are praying for something that seems like it might just be a pipe dream I am focusing my intentionality on drawing forth the best possible timeline regardless of what that may be right the best t possible timeline may get really ugly for a little while and that is something to pay attention to and to be mindful of there are diabolical forces that are working with intentionality 
against the good of humankind for specifically their own good. But once you get your brain wrapped around this subject, you find out that at the end of 2012, in an easy way to put it, uh, the choices that we make become less and less consequential to the future. And eventually we're pushed into this bottleneck of time, no matter which choice we make. Let's talk about the bottleneck real quick. The way the bottleneck works, right, is like this. <clears throat> suppose, just suppose, that there were millions of people across the earth, possibly billions, but millions, who all believe the same thing, right? See what I'm saying? And of those millions of people all believe in the same thing, they all have an ending that they have all collectively agreed to. And it narrows the choices into that one that has been agreed to. You, through extensive prayer and meditative work, can separate yourself to a great degree from the events that will happen, or that have been decided by humanity, and pull yourself into the alternate. Because no matter which choice you make, this bottleneck is there. But on the other side of that bottleneck is two very distinct clear paths. And which path that you continue on is up to you. You can choose the path of self-sacrifice and dying for the cause. And you will not be faulted for that because that is the end of this existence, right? We're at the ascension point. We're at the point where the choices are made for the next round, the next level of the harmonics. Oh, are you going to proceed into the next level of harmonics? Or are you going to remain in this level of harmonics? Oh, and so you can choose to go that route. You could be one of the people that is actively pulling this existence of dystopia into existence, or you can very intentionally choose to surround yourself with people who are pulling for the opposite themselves. Because if you gather together, you can pull it into existence, right? I want other people who are making the same choices that I am so that when we come out of the bottleneck, our path diverges to the right and not to the left, right? And I say that somewhat facetiously because of the way that things are dichotomized right now. There is a right and a left, and the right seems to be right about most things. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, so let my path go to the right. Let it be righteous. Let it be on the side of creation and nature and stewardship and love. That is where I want to be. All right. And that's important. Y'all see why I wanted to do this video? Important to the people that had access to Looking Glass because they would use Looking Glass knowing the choices that they would make and the future would pop up. The big mistake was coming up with the possibility of future. And when we started using a computer to say, well, if we make this choice, it's 79% possible that this scenario happens, and 23% are possible or whatever, round numbers, that this scenario would happen. The understanding at the time was that was realistic. However, if you go down the road further and free will continues to exercise itself on this game, that 79% possibility sometimes changes very, very fast. But if you look at the situation in a point of time, it seems very realistic that that's the greatest possibility. Now imagine, if you were one of these diabolical forces, and you and your group are already focusing, right? You know what's up. You know that this is a real thing. And you are focusing your energy towards making it come out. But suppose you also controlled all the sources of information for all of the people. And 
you could direct them, much like sheep, in a direction that you want them to go. So, if you want to create racial division, you start making sure that certain people die and that they raise all kinds of hell about it. And it's not good and decent people that are dying. And I'm sorry if it's going to piss somebody off, but I'm, uh, this is a sorry, not sorry. <clears throat> the whole incident with King George and the situation that arose through that summer behind that was a complete manipulation of the people. There was a reason why you got to see that video. And you didn't see uh, Tim Tempe, I think that was his name, uh, get, st get his neck stomped on at the same, relatively the same point in time. There's a reason why one of those made the news and one of them didn't. There's a reason why every single time that there is a news report, it is geared towards getting you spun up. They want you to jump onto Facebook and start throwing out these, these things that really set your intentionality towards this dichotomy and the direction that they want this dichotomy to go. That is the point of the media manipulation. That is the point of the censorship. That is the point of all of the things so far. What happened was people, very smart people, began to figure out that something big was coming up. Something that made it so all the possibilities of all the future scenarios of any choice, any possibility that was fed in and observed through the looking glass inherently ended up in the same future. And no decision, no possibility changed past a certain point. And we just talked about why I think that has been decided. That is the largest collective decision happening on the planet at any point in time. That's the big secret. And there are variations of it that all point to the exact same ending, right? And that has got thousands of people both teaching on and learning from these situations and setting their intentions even unintentionally on this goal all possible timelines lead to the same basic set of history in the future that is what sends everybody that has all of the information that knows everything into a blind panic i believe that this is going to be the shift the thing that happens that changes the entire world. I've talked about it in a multitude of videos. We will talk about it in a multitude more until it is time for it to happen. I think that what is going to happen is going to be unavoidable. It is going to be global and it will be undeniable. And I hope to both equip myself and you with the ability to carry on on the other side of it when we do not have these resources any longer. You need to learn this stuff now so that you can, on the other side of this, get it right. The people that know everything about Looking Glass, that have gotten all the reports and all the information, the elites of the world, probably figured out that that was the end of the game. And nothing could be manipulated beyond that point. When I was in the military, it would have been before 97 when I got in trouble, one of my particular areas that I was amazingly intuitive about is problem solving slash mission planning, or um, more specifically, taking a bad mission and fixing it. Certainly knowing how string theory and possible futures works, 
makes it so you can work your mind very quickly to see the reality of what's happening. It's very NI dominant. And decide what decisions need to be <clears> made <throat> to change it for a particular outcome. At a certain point... What will most likely happen is this, is NI. After they're done hearing the computer tell them, this is what's going to happen over and over and over and over again. All they become focused on is, how do we fix it? What I do know is that I was called in and asked to solve this problem, this timeline contraction problem. And I eventually did my due diligence and did all the investigating and basically only had one piece of information, and that was reinforcement. The computer's right. <laughs> Timelines will contract down to some inevitable thing. There is an inevitable event. It's been forecast, it's been predicted. And I hope I've been able to show you what I believe it is. It's been. Like, if you're not familiar with what I've been doing here, you should really go back and watch the Bible studies. Go back and watch some of the way what's. Fed to us in a slop trough of what they want us to believe will happen. They don't actually have control over what happens. That is the most important thing to pull out of this. They don't have control over what will happen. If we, as a collective, can focus ourselves on the bottleneck and what comes out of the back side of the bottleneck, then we can have a better society on the back side of that. They only have if we just allow them to do what they're going to do, it will be the dystopia. It will be. Have control over the reaction, and it seems that no matter of because we're starting a new probability point. That's what's happening here, right? We're converging. We've finished the calculation, and we're converging, and we're about to start a new probability point of what would happen if, blah blah blah, blah, blah right? Or what they tried to. I think we're going to start back with zero technology, though. Do to call. I think the reason they want to concentrate people in camps is for an active, ready, user-friendly workforce on the other side of this. Because slavery is a part of history, and it will be part of the future. Like, it's active now. There's still people being bought and sold as slaves right now. Like, right now as I speak, somebody is being sold somewhere. Uh, both on the block and in the black market. There are open-air slave markets that function right now. And so... Uh, if we allow them to set the, the intentionality of the probability point, then we've got a problem on the other side of that. I think that we do have the ability to collectively turn from our ways and repent and turn our face to the Lord and set our intentions on the good and pull us out of this bottleneck. And even though the timeline's like, they're going to get their timeline. There's enough of them. They're going to get a timeline that slides off to the left. I want to help build the timeline that's going to slide off to the right, and we will be separated from them. Cause their desired reaction is going to have an opposite effect. Much, much easier for me to explain today what that process is as opposed to back then. If I had to give it a name, I would say it's the awakening process. It's an evolution of consciousness. It's the first of the month. That cannot, will not, and no matter what decisions or possibilities are injected into the equation, eventually it all resolves down to us all learning the truth and becoming aware of this massive dam of lies that has been built that keep us from knowing massive volume of information that we show the ones possess. Essentially what happened with Looking Glass, not only did they not want people to use it anymore because they knew it was just going to burp out the same thing, uh, but at the same time they didn't want anybody else to know what it was saying. I'm sure. Troll because in that information... What was that? I'm sure. Troll because in that essence. information... Troll in essence. Else to know what it was saying. I'm sure. Troll because in that essence. information 
was a, a monument. I think that might have been a watermark, maybe. Mental concern when I was in the military about how to prevent this inevitability. Now, at first, I thought it was end of the world. Now I see end of the world is end of their world. No. It is an end of the the way that we live life now will happen. Regardless of what happens, that is the bottleneck. The bottleneck is this great shift of the planet 90 degrees. It is the, the burning of most things on the planet. It is the poisoning of a lot of waters. It is the death of a lot of species. That is the bottleneck. What comes out of the other side of the bottleneck is the future that we need to shape. Right? The biggest cherry on top of all this and the bottleneck is outside of control they can they can plan they can do whatever but the bottleneck will happen regardless of what they're trying to do that is god deciding that this is the end point for this part of the experiment conversation um would be a synopsis to say that if i could convince everybody out there that for all intents and purposes what we believe to be true eventually becomes true if somebody convinces us that a major disaster is going to happen in the very near future a major disaster happens in the very near future if we don't buy into that fear and accept that there's really nothing that we know know is going to happen and accept of whatever happens that makes the convergence of the timelines happen as naturally as possible. Any attempts to try to go away from this one inevitable conclusion, I again see as a new beginning, uh, an end of this reality, the beginning of something that we can't even possibly understand based on the level of our beliefs currently. <laughs> The Covenant of the Rainbow. That was my video yesterday. But when all that information comes flooding out... Like, I believe there will be a new Covenant of the Rainbow, and I'm jumping on it right now. There's going to be no denying... And what he just said about the resistance, right? There's a whole lot of people who are absolutely convinced that they're about to go to war. I don't think that is a good idea. I, like, both from... The histories that I have read, including the Bible and the other native histories for indigenous peoples throughout the world, I don't believe that there is a fight to be had here, right? But just using the Bible, it tells you not to fight, it tells you to run. If you're called to die, then die, but if you're called to, to run, then run. But it doesn't. you're not called to fight in any case. If they come for you and you get caught, then you're called to go into captivity right and if they come and you resist and you die then you die but uh, we're called to die joyfully we're called to die in the name of the Lord we're called to die proclaiming goodness and refusing to comply with evil that is what we're called to die for when they go to behead the saints in the book of Revelation they're beheading the saints for not taking the mark well that goes all the way back right to Daniel saying no I will not worship this beast. That is what that goes back to. And it's the same thing. And it will be the same thing all the way up to the bottleneck. Until the event that is coming. We're not to resist it though. Like there's not a lot of. There is no measure of. If I'm this big of a patriot. And I fight to defend the constitution. Which trust me this hurts me to say. Like, there's nothing you can do to defend that when this comes out because it is already that it, it is the bottle right we're in the bottle we're, we're heading towards the neck and the neck is the one world government it is the event that is going to happen all of those things will happen there are too many people focused for it not to happen there are too many people who already are looking and every day People like me are like, man, it really looks like the end times. And then every time you say that, it's setting that intention a little bit harder. What's true and what... And the point of that little rant was don't fight. 
Don't fight. Run. Take yourself to the wilderness. Hide. But don't fight. What's a lie or what's illusion? Basically, what we're experiencing right now is two master chess players sitting at the board. And one of them looks down at the board and sees that he's in checkmate in seven moves. And he looks across at his opponent and he knows that his opponent sees it too. So there's no getting out of it. So at this point, the loser can only prolong the game. Both players know the game is over. It's only a matter of time before he does this, and then you're forced to do this, and then he's forced to do this, and eventually checkmate. We, as a race, if we could understand that the game is over, that based on the rules of the game, the bad guys have already lost, the good guys have already won, yes, there's moves left on the table. But those moves are being forced by the player that is going to win. Um, the only way that checkmate can't happen is if the player that's winning makes a mistake. But from all of the information that I've gathered, all of the information that's been given, all of the information that's been vetted to me, it seems pretty obvious that the good guy player on the side of the chessboard knows exactly what has to be done to win the game. And so... Yes. <laughs> yes. At this point, any mistake would be all but impossible. But again, you really have to understand the game to know that the guy that's losing is lost. And I'm sure most people sitting watching a chess match between two advanced chess players know the game's over long after the two players know it's over. Because they can't see the board and see that there's only seven moves left. All right, we're going to let it play on out because you know how we do. Y'all make sure y'all get back over to Inspired. Give them a like, share, sub, throw them a comment, let them know. You appreciate what they're doing over there. I do. They're bringing us some good information. I've been trying to lean away from doing too many reactions to their stuff, but they have some really good stuff over there. This one I had a lot I wanted to talk about, so we do, we brought it up to talk about it. I hope that I brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion to something that is very much setting the foundation for some things that we are going to be doing moving forward. This talk on intentionality this talk on the possibilities in the future that is going to come into play at a later date. So it is a good concept to start to wrap your mind around. It's a good concept to try and put into your life right now. Start focusing your intentions on the life that you want to create. Start focusing your intentions on where you want to be on the other side of this bottleneck because this bottleneck is coming and all of these lights are going to be gone. All of these comforts that we take for granted are going to be gone. It's going to happen. Too many people have already decided that it's going to. Let's focus on pulling our group out on the other side. I would. It would be great if the whole crew could make it, right? Some of y'all won't. Some of y'all are going to dismiss this. Some of y'all are going to be like, it's whatever. Don't do that. This is very real forces that we're playing with. We're talking about very real things. Whether or not you realize it. <clears throat> these people, the other people, not, not these people inspired, but these people on the other side, they are very much aware that this is real. That magic is real. That intentionality is real. That God is real. And they are set to pull their intentions into the future. There will be a bottleneck and there will be different probabilities coming out of that. Make sure you pick your points. All right. Oh, inspired, thank you for this. I appreciate it. It was good stuff. It, it really got me talking. So, John, Kristen, thank you. Or, I can't remember her name. You never see her. Christine. I think it's Christine. John and Christine. Thank you for this. I appreciate it. To the crew, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me. And I'm praying for you every single day. 
Till next time, this has been Penn State. Peace.